Hello again. So I believe that Greg Gutfeld is one of the most astute political commentators on television today. Listen to what he said last week on The Five. I've noticed a trend. I call it the never mind then compromise. For example, when the media went after Mormonism, con conservatives responded with Reverend Wright. Oh, never mind then. When the media trumpeted the dog on the roof story, conservatives responded with Obama chowing down on a chow. <laughs> never mind then. When the media brought up something from Romney's past 50 years ago, conservatives just read Obama's book out loud. Never mind then. It's a pattern. An issue becomes off limits if it bounces back on Obama. Now, whether you agree or disagree with Greg Gutfeld's explanation of why the fuss around these stories has largely quieted down. I think we can all agree that the buzz surrounding these things from Mitt Romney's past, you know, taking his dog on vacation to Canada and uh, clipping some hippie's hair back when he was in high school, has largely fizzled. And these stories are no longer the talk of the town or buzz of the blogosphere, as it were. Unless, of course, you have a disturbing devotion to an adoration for President Obama and are intent on neutralizing any perceived threats to him staying in power, because the day after that episode of The Five that I just showed you a clip from aired more than 24 hours after that program aired. This is what Rachel Maddow led her show with. This was in the A Block. According to the Post's reporting, as an 18-year-old, Mitt Romney objected to the appearance of a, quote, soft-spoken new student one year behind Romney, who was perpetually teased for his nonconformity and presumed homosexuality. This is how the Post reported it. Now he was walking around the all-boys school with bleach blonde hair that draped over one eye, and Romney wasn't having it. He can't look like that. That's wrong. Just look at him, an incensed Mitt Romney told a friend in the Stevens Hall dorm. A few days later, Romney's friend entered the dorm to find Mr. Romney marching out of his own room ahead of a prep school posse shouting about their plan plan to cut the student's hair. Romney's friend followed the boys to a nearby room where they came upon the younger student, tackled him, and pinned him to the ground. As the student, his eyes filling with tears, screamed for help, Mitt Romney repeatedly clipped his hair with a pair of scissors. After the Washington Post published that story, Mr. Romney's campaign initially denied that the incident had ever happened. Then the candidate stopped denying it, but laughed it off, said he didn't remember it. And even though he didn't remember it, he was sure he did not think that kid was gay. He apologized if anybody was offended, and he laughed, and he said it was just a prank. Character issues are the great unquantifiable in electoral politics, right? Everybody thinks it's very important, but it's hard to define. And frankly, who knows if this is the sort of thing that is going to determine how people vote in November. But you have to admit, even if you think it's not going to be determinative, a story like this can't help. If you're running for president, you can't tell people to unlearn this about you, but you really don't want to remind them of it if you can avoid it. It casts the same kind of political pall as the story of Mitt Romney strapping the dog to the roof of his car. Mitt Romney once put the family dog in a kennel on top of the family station wagon and then drove that station wagon all the way from Boston to Ontario in Canada. The dog got sick on the top of the car. One of Mr. Romney's sons once told a reporter about how Mr. Romney pulled over, turned a hose on the sick dog, and then put the sick dog back in the kennel on the top of the car and got back on the highway for more hours of highway speed driving. The pinning down the screaming, crying student and cutting off his hair because you objected to it story, and the strapping the dog to the roof of the car and heading out on the highway story, these are not going to be what the campaign for the presidency is about. But if you are the Mitt Romney campaign, you know that those stories are out there, and you really, really do not want to remind people of these stories. But apparently you do, Rachel. What does it say about someone that she's given this terrific venue, a nationally televised TV program, 
And this is what she chooses to lead off with one night. I mean, maybe it's a testament to the strength of Mitt Romney's character that his detractors, or one of them at least, is choosing to focus so much attention on stories that are weeks or months old about stuff that he did decades ago that really wasn't all that bad. And, yeah, I will give Rachel Maddow credit for this. She may be knocking Mitt Romney for stuff he did many decades ago, but at least she's not laying into him for what he did didn't do many decades ago. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. came to town when Mitt Romney was 16 years old. 125,000 people marched with Dr. King that day in Detroit. Mitt Romney wasn't one of them. There were hundreds and hundreds of 16-year-olds marching with Dr. King in that crowd of 125,000. Mitt Romney had a chance to march with Dr. King when he was 16 years old. He had a chance to march with history, and he didn't do it. Back in February, National Review ran an opinion piece by Kevin Williamson in which he wrote that MSNBC is a cable news channel in precisely the same sense that a gentleman's club is a club for gentlemen. I thought that was pretty spot on, but I want to know what you all think. Is there any semblance of journalism left in MSNBC's primetime lineup? Will the network ever reverse course and tack back to the center, or will it continue down this road it's on ever since making that sharp left turn so many years ago? What and how many mental disorders is Lawrence O'Donnell suffering from? Please, post a comment below, post a video response if you want, that would be interesting. Don't forget to subscribe, and most importantly, follow me on Twitter. Actually, even more important than that, please check out my blog. I'd really like to get some more people commenting on the articles on my blog and, of course, follow me on Twitter, at Right Wing Genius. Thank you all, have a good one, and don't mess with the Right Wing Genius.